All right, guys. My name is Ashley Horner. I want to welcome you to the Reborn podcast. And I want to especially thank everyone who has listened to the episodes, everyone who has dropped comments, left reviews, subscribed. It really means a lot. And this is just the beginning of the Reborn podcast as we dig into so much that I have experienced uh, with fitness, so much that I've experienced with business, being an entrepreneur, being a female entrepreneur, being a badass athlete, and kind of the mindset that it takes of failing, coming completely undone, and building yourself back up, which is the name of the podcast, Reborn, which is very fitting. So I just want to say, take a moment, say thank you so much for that. And today I am honored to have my mom on the podcast with me. And we're going to talk about a lot of stuff. We're going to talk about my childhood. We're going to talk about some of the endeavors my mom has uh, gone through and really how, I mean, they say there's a saying that the the apple doesn't fall too far from the tree. And I think that that's really true Um, with my mom and I, we are very much the same, so much so that we definitely butt heads a lot. (laughs) Because I think that we're both, I guess, would you say we're both alpha females? I know I'm an alpha female. Are you? Independent. Huh? Strong willed, independent. Yeah. Yeah. My mom's been up visiting me now for a week, and we've had a lot of fun together. And I found out yesterday when I was kind of briefing my mom on the podcast, and she was trying everything she could to get out of it, but I locked her (laughs) in. Um, if you could see my mom, she's um, almost five foot. She's like four eight. No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm How tall are you? Four twelve. <laughs> four twelve. Probably a hundred pounds. So she's little. Yeah, she's little. <clears throat> and don't let that be deceiving because she is the strongest woman that I know. She is a warrior. She is a fighter and she is an alpha female and she gets stuff done. And so talking to her last night and getting her ready for the podcast and, you know, kind of telling her a little bit about what to expect um, and her kind of fighting me, not wanting to be on the podcast. And I was like, well, it's okay, mom, we're going to take a, a shot of whiskey. It's kind of what we've been doing since the beginning. It's a tradition. She's like, well, I've never taken a shot of whiskey. Mm-hmm. First of all, I, I don't know if I believe that. <laughs> well, if I have, it was a long time in my college days. <laughs> How's that? Yeah. yeah. What did you drink back in college? What um, was the drink? Well, we didn't have any cool beers, so... I just didn't drink a lot. Um, Mom. Well, actually, uh, growing up, your dad and I, we did not have alcohol in the house. We did not. Um, We would go out and have uh, maybe a mixed drink, uh, you know, the frou-frou drinks. Um, And then I remember when you guys were, uh, when I was home alone, and one day there was a six-pack of beer in the refrigerator, and your brother was there and he said mom there's beer in the refrigerator what is that I'm like son I can have a beer every once in a while if I want one but so I was never just a really big drinker so but I like dark and stormies and somewhat hoppy beer well today we're gonna take a shot (laughs) of whiskey and I got her a pretty good whiskey it's uh we're gonna do American Honey and it has like a, it's from wild turkey and it has like kind of a, a honey aftertaste. We'll so see. I think you're going to like it. So we're going to do a toast to. I see um, a toast to my awesome daughter. No, mom. <laughs> that I am so proud of. We're, we're going to do a toast to um, never giving up and never giving in. No matter how alone you might feel, no matter how deserted you might feel. It's basically standing up, being a badass, and just doing it. So, cheers. I'll drink to that. Make sure we zoom in on my mom on this one. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. What do you think? 
honey. It's good. Yeah, that is good. Give me another. Mom. Just kidding. <laughs> Just kidding. So my mom and I have, um, she came up about four or five days ago, and we went and saw Lola, um, my horse, and this was the first time that you've met Lola. Yes, it was. And I've had Lola for about a year and a half now. She's part quarter horse, part Arabian. Yes. Um, and growing up, we had, how many horses did we have at one time? At one time, your dad and I, we were raising uh, running quarter horses and paint horses. We had 28 horses. They weren't our, all ours. We were training them, too. But there was 28 horses we had. How was that? <clears throat> uh, it was a lot of work because you, you and your brother were really, really small. And um, I, I was a stay-at-home mom at that time. I had been teaching I quit teaching school and had you all, and <clears throat> so that was a full-time job. Um, it was a lot of fun. And you would but take them to, like, the work. track, and they would race? Yes, we'd take you all to the track. You went everywhere with us. You, you uh, were just little rugrats running around, just um, helping out with the horses, with what you could do when you were really young. Um, we just tried to keep you out of the way, a little bit out from under their feet. And as you got bigger, you got to muck out the stalls. And how, how old was I his... when I started riding? Uh, you, well, you were riding with your dad probably when you were three. Wow. Uh, Bare back. Yeah. On, yeah. Um, but then from that on, time on, we got your own little black beauty, a little Shetland. And, yep, that was um, my first horse. Yep. And then, and then Zach had his own horse, but, but in the summertime, and I think that like a lot, a lot of my childhood, 100% has to do with like who I am today. I think that we have all of these life experiences and, um, I, cause I remember my summer times, I didn't, they were spent on the ranch. Right. We bailed hay. Right. We, we lived out in the country. Um, we had a gravel road. Uh, we just... We didn't live in a neighborhood, so yeah. it was just family. I mean, we our life revolved around the horses, and we had property uh, away from the house. We had an acreage there with cattle. So, yeah, we were hauling hay. We were rounding up cows. It was it was a how fun, many How fun many life. summers did we do that? Because I remember there was one summer that I did go to, like, a camp, but... My, when you talk about like things that we remember, and it's probably why I ended up really wanting like, to get a horse, and I didn't know like the the work that it took, especially because Lola's green, and you know we'll we can talk about that in a second. But um, I like my best memories, and you you kind of reflect back in your life. My best memories were just me running around barefoot on the ranch and with Zach and with you guys, and you know riding horses, fixing the uh, fence line. And I always remember that we would, I don't know if you remember this, but you know, we would, we would work all day on the ranch and then on the way home, um, coming back home to like, you know, our, our rock and D ranch, we would stop at like Sonic or something. And like, that's what I remember is we, we'd get the, um, Oh, what was that? Brown bag specials. Brown bag specials. Yeah. We'd get hamburgers, French fries, uh, and pop. Yeah. And we'd eat that on the way home. Yeah. And, and that's what I remember. I don't really remember going to the camps or anything. And, and maybe that was like later on in my childhood. But when I think about my childhood growing up, that's what I remember. I remember being on the ranch and, and I think that that's why whenever I, I ended up getting Lola, um, I wanted to get Lola because I, I felt like it took me back to those times of, and I didn't realize like Lola's a, a lot of work. Because yes. when I got her, she yeah. was green. And I have this, uh, there's a story that I remember of my mom. And I, you might remember how old I was, but we didn't watch a lot of TV. And you no, had, I was watching TV this afternoon or whatever. And, you know, it was probably like Bugs Bunny or something. And you came running in the, the door, the front door. You had blood all down your face, your shirt. And I just remember you seeing, you were like wiping the blood from your face. 
and you ran to the sink and I, I remember I, I like turned around and I looked at you and I was like, mom, I was like, what, like, what, like what's happening, mom? And cause you look like you got beat up and you were like, I, who was it that bug, you, bu- you got bucked off. I did. So here's the story. Okay. So I went down all by myself. I put the wrong saddle on, on this horse and, um, <clears throat> she didn't like it. And anyway, when I got on her, I didn't have control of her and she just bucked me right off and I landed on the ground. Your dad happened to be looking out the, the back door and he saw it because it actually knocked me out. Oh. Because, and I was sitting there and I don't even remember it. He came down, took me to the house and then, then that's when you saw me and he's... So how did you get the bloody nose? Um... Just the way I landed, it hit my shoulder. Yeah, it, yeah, it hit my nose. Yeah. Did you end up breaking your nose? It, no, uh, that was I had done that when in a car wreck when I was sixteen. Uh, no, um, but yeah, there was just you know the way I landed, and we should have gone to the hospital, and um, because my shoulder, I still have issues. And, and it was from when you got bucked off. Yeah, yeah, and we didn't. Uh, we didn't go. I'm like, oh, no, I'm fine. He says, well, do you remember what happened? And I'm like, no. How would you get me to the house? I remember being on the horse. Mm-hmm. So I probably had a slight concussion. And we didn't but- wear helmets back then. Oh, no. No. No, there was, no. Mm-mm. No helmets. And this is what I remember, though. How old do you think I was? You were probably seven or eight. Yeah. Yeah. I, I had mean, this you, memory, you though, of... You, I'm I didn't sure even know that dad, you. I didn't even know that dad brought you back to the house, but I, like, cause I don't know if he like came inside with you, but I have this memory of you coming in. You're all bloody. You went to the, uh, to the kitchen sink. You're wiping away the blood from your nose. You turn right around and you went back out. And I remember dad yelling at you because you were like, I'm going to go get back on that horse. And, and I remember I dad remember saying, Patsy, yeah. don't you go get back that. on that horse. <laughs> I remember that. I forgot about that. You but know, like, but I was why? really kind of concussed a little bit. You know, I didn't really know what I was doing. But what, so. like, in your mind, though, why Why were you? Cause it, well, it because was like I in saw breaking something. the horses, yeah, in training the horses. Um, was this, a, was this like, a, a well-trained horse, or were you just starting to? She was, she was, yeah, and Ashley, her name was, we named her after you. We named... Uh, Ashley's Percentage? Uh, no, she... Uh, yes, it was. Ashley's, Ashley's Percentage. Ashley's Percentage. Um, part of the bloodline was Percentage. Anyway, so... Um, and she was just a little a little cranky. But, I mean, she was a, a, a well-broke horse. It was it was probably the rider. I was not, you know, Because you just attention. put the... Yeah, the yeah I just different. put the wrong saddle on it. It was too big. It didn't fit me. Yeah. And anyway, so she took advantage of that. But... In when I was training horses, if I my thing was if I got bucked off, if I didn't get back on that horse and straighten him out or let him know, you know, that's we're not doing that, uh, then that becomes a habit that right. they have. So we were in the business of training a few of other people's horses. So um, yeah, and I was the smallest one and um, pretty athletic, and so I was I was the one that got on the bad horses. The bad but horses. I liked it. I know. I'm sure I you did. It. I can see you. You listen to me, you big <laughs> thousand pound animal. Yuck. Okay, we're not I'm doing that. I'm as big and I weigh as much as you do. Yeah. Well, not exactly. Yeah. But so I remember, and whenever I got Lola, um, I didn't know, Lola was very green. She was very green. And she didn't even have, she hadn't even had like a bit in her mouth ever. And so it's kind of funny because, like, you know, so we have this, you know, I remember, for whatever reason, seeing you and, like, getting bucked off and, like, you know, wiping the blood from your nose and, like, you're running back out after the horse. Like, you're going to get back on this horse that just knocked you, you out. I really and did remember that one, yeah. I do. Yeah. I, like, I, and I don't know, like, why I remember that so vividly, but... Whenever I had Lola, and, and she's very green, and I was getting her trained, it, it, whenever I got Lola, it was like, 
I had this idea in my mind that like, oh, having a horse and I can just ride her around Virginia Beach and she can just be my buddy. But, you know, having her and she does have an attitude. Yeah. She's got some she, spirit. She's, she's got good. she's got a little bit of spunk to her. Um, and, you know, and, she, and, and she's green and having to... I guess like work a horse from the ground up and I've never done that. No, because your your life was around horses all your life, but you were young right. and you 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 when you got older you weren't like trying to train horses. No. I mean you just you just rode our horses. So you didn't have the background yeah. to start with a horse that was yeah. where Lola was at, which right. very, very green. And it's like everything else. You you have to start from the bottom up and a little bit at a time. And so you, I felt like we're learning, you know, what to do again with, I did, with a I, horse and she was learning too. Yeah. So yeah. you couldn't just jump right on her and take off. Yeah. And, um, whenever I, whenever I got Lola and I, you know, and she had gotten to the point where I was able to start riding her. And so, I got on Lola, and it was kind of the same thing. Like, her, I, I introduced a new bridle to her, mm-hmm. um, and it was a bit. It was a different uh, bit. Yep. But I think, I don't even know what it was. I'm not sure what it was, but I ended up, whenever I got on Lola, and I was doing laps around, is it called, like, an arena, or what is that? Yeah, the arena. in the arena. So I was doing some laps around the arena, and there was also another horse in there as well, which she had been like fine, you know, in the in the past or whatever. But I think it was also kind of like a distraction, you know. She kept like, you know, like what is this other horse doing in here? And she ended up she bucked me off, and yeah. I'm I am thankful I landed very gracefully, and I have to give that props because I, you know, just like my athleticism. Yeah, yeah. Um, I didn't get a bloody nose, but. <laughs> When as soon as I got bucked off, it was like I didn't even know where she was at. I started running the opposite direction of towards the gate, and right then, that entire story of you getting bucked off of AP Ashley's percentage and running into the house with a bloody nose, I saw that story <laughs> in my mind, and I was like, my mom. My, if my mom was here, she would tell me, no, Ashley Ann, you get back on that horse. You've got to show that horse who's boss. And I did. Yep. I, I, I started running away. I stopped. And I said, this is it. I can't run away. i got to go towards her. And, I mean, and horses are so intimidating. Oh, like, yeah. Because they're so yeah, big. They're big. They can hurt you. They even, are so even, big. Yeah, even the ones you trust, yeah. And and it was remembering that story in my childhood of uh, you getting bucked off and applying that to when Lola bucked me off. She hasn't bucked me off since. She's bucked off other people. <laughs> but <laughs> she's doing good. I mean, she's, you know, she's doing a lot better. And, and now, like, I'm, you know, my schedule is kind of at a place where... I can get out there a lot more, but it's, she's a lot of work. I love her. I love her. Yeah. But she's a good horse. So, whenever you were growing up, did you play any sports? No, no. Um, back in my day, when I was in school, um, there was there was nothing. There was in school there was no organized sports, um, and especially for girls. Um, Uh, I played softball, and then in school there was only basketball, and, you know, being maybe then I was five foot one, um, that was not a sport for me. Are you saying you've shrunk? Yeah, probably. (laughs) You know, I'm 4'12 now, remember? So, well, just just to, like, back up a little bit, give a little bit of a kind of, like, what you're into now. You used to do skydiving all the time. Yes, before I met your dad. Um, you did on a bet. I did. Uh, you did like the tricks in the air, right? Where you would. Well, like, hold we on would. To yeah, we would try to hook up and make make formations. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. I started skydiving, which was so fun. Um, I was teaching, and I had a part time job, and my so friends in the part time job. You were teaching though. Whenever whenever my mom says she was teaching, she taught special ed. Yes, I had a degree in special education. Yep, did that for about eight years, and then. Um, on a dare, we did the skydiving out of eight of us, 
it stuck with two of us, me and another girl. We were like, yeah, we like this. We're going to How many do jumps this. did you have to do to get certified to jump out by yourself? Well, did I they had have to, tandem at the time? Were no, you ju- tandem, no. Oh. You had a static line. And it was based on the instructor when he felt like you were confident enough to pull the cord and not just pancake down on the ground, you know, freak <laughs> out. Uh, so I think probably I had to do six six or so static line jumps, which automatically opened your parachute, and you didn't have to really think about it. Um, and so I remember the very first time, though, and you had to get out on the wing strut, and you had to hold on, and then he's like, because these were little bitty planes, and he's like... What's the wing What's the wing uh, strut? Out, you got your wings, and then the... Sh- the Underneath? The, like a support there, uh-huh. and you just had to grab a hold of it. You know, they open the door, and it's like... Whew, and you had to hold on and just let your feet off. And then they're like, okay, you got, because they spotted me where I had to let go at a certain time to land where I was supposed to be. Yeah. They're like, uh, let go, uh, let go. I'm like, okay. <laughs> and I did. And I mean, that was the biggest thrill. So I, I did about 90 some jumps. And then I had met your dad, and, and he wouldn't even come out and watch me oh, really? jump out of the <laughs> airplane. He's like, you know. People jump out of perfectly good airplanes. What's wrong with that? <laughs> so um, I gave it up. Yeah. You know, it was all worth I, it. I that vaguely was remember, because you had your, I don't know if it was your, sh- like your shoot, your parachute or. I think I just let go back- of that about a year ago. I know. Yeah. I remember seeing it in the closet forever. Do you think you could still remember how to pack your shoot? No, no. I never packed my shoot. Oh, you know, you said, right. okay, yeah. you had somebody yeah, no, who packed I your shoot for you. I paid somebody to do that. You know, I trusted Did them. Did you learn how to them. pack your shoot? No, I, I didn't want because, to do that. Okay. No, no. Uh, there was a little you bit would to trust, it. You would trust somebody else? Well, because they packed like hundreds and hundreds of shoots. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to. Like, what's your record for packing yeah, shoots? Yeah, how many of you packed? Have you had any faults? Yeah, yeah. So anyway, that was that was an exciting time. Um, uh, but then so, I moved on, you know. Yeah, because you did parachuting and then uh, jump, skydiving, and then we yeah, did the you know all the horse things, and then when um, life changed, you yeah, know, when um, my life changed, I got into more things: um, mountain biking, uh, mountain biking racing, road biking, uh, road biking. No road, no road are racing. Are you do, are you doing road? Road bike, like road biking now? You still are, aren't you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I still mountain bike. Yeah. Um, despite well, what about road biking? I, uh, yeah, I road bike, yeah. So I remember Probably this, this could have been like four years ago. I remember you were coming to my house, and I don't know like what your crash was, but you had just fallen off and you had broken some ribs. Oh, yeah, was that, that was a biking? race we did. Yeah, that was a race we did, and uh. That was an interesting race, yeah. So, I, so just to, and I know my mom won't say this, but I don't know if you're competing anymore or right now, but my mom used to be a competitive mountain bike racer or road, road racing? Uh, mountain bike only. Mountain bike. Yeah. But my mom, in order for her to get any sort of like stimulation from competing, she would go down one or two age groups below her and compete in that age group and you would still smoke them. Most of them. <laughs> not everybody. Not everybody. Yeah, but it was a, a little, com- yeah. a competitiveness. Well, and again, there in Oklahoma, there's not, a, oh, there's not as many oh, mom, females. There no, there's so not. Many. There, well, it's growing now. It's, it's growing. Arkansas is big. Um, but but we're, we're growing. But you had crashed whenever you... Well, ever, yeah, that was a race that I crashed into a tree. I <laughs> ended up fracturing four ribs. Four ribs. And, and I and still rode out and, and you still finished, finished the it. race. Did I you lost place? my bite valve, so I had no water. How much further did you have to go? I had to go, like, about two more miles. And two that, more miles. And that's a lot when you're yeah. going through the, you know, we don't mountain bike on flat terrain so yeah. much, which I really like. <laughs> um, I mean, it's technical. You got rocks, you got hills. And you all finish it with four fractured ribs. Yeah. And no I, water. It, but I was last. I, uh-huh. I did not finish in a good place. I was so, just but, happy to finish. So what, like, why Why didn't you just stop? You knew you were hurt. How come you didn't just stop and be like, come get me? Well, because I just didn't, <laughs> I didn't want to do that. I well, just, why, well, why, though? Uh, because I still have the ability to get myself out of there. I mean, if I could not have done it, I would have, you know, got someone to help me. But I could still get on my bike, and it hurt. But I think the adrenaline was still going, and um, 
Does so. that does that ever leave you as you get older? Well, like my last crash I had, which actually fractured my hip, and um, and we were in a in a in Tulsa, and we were deep into the trails, and it was like you know when I got up, I realized. This isn't like my regular crashes, which I always got back up. This is your this is your second big crash. Yeah, this that is happened my biggest last crash. Year. Yeah, this was a year ago, next week, and uh, and it was a casual ride, and I just you know everything was in line. I just I just actually tipped over and just hit a rock just the wrong way, and when I tried to get up, I was like, okay, I was with my girlfriend and a friend. My husband was out road riding. So he wasn't there to help us. And uh, I just realized this was bigger. And they're like, well, we can call 911. I'm like, no, <laughs> no, you just put me back up on the bike. When my friend picked me up and he tried to pick me up first, I was like, put me down, put me down. Because it, it hurt. Oh, man, it was, yeah. How are we going to get out of here? So they put me on my bike. One pulled me, one pushed me. And it was pretty, they were pretty awesome because they helped me get out. But we had about a half a mile to have to get out like that until we got to the parking lot and then and then your dad or Dan got there and we uh he took me to the emergency room but yeah that one you have like a rod in your hip yeah I have two screws and a rod in my little hip yeah and that was like your second biggest yeah and hopefully the last yeah yeah big crash like that but what's uh you know with your recovery and you ended up having obviously to have surgery Mm -hmm. and because of your age and we're not going to say how old you are but if people want to do the math you were born in 54 oh thank you very much ashley i didn't say how old you wait until the interview's over (laughs) i didn't say how old you were i said the year (laughs) um you know and my mom falls in the age category of being a senior citizen. <laughs> I know. I take advantage of it, too, <laughs> yes, when there's a do. discount. Like if they're a citizen? senior citizen, everybody looks at her like, ma'am, I need to see an ID. <laughs> 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 but you're, you know, it, before, like, the doctor could even really look at you for the recovery and the physical therapist, like, they were telling you to, like, you know, that you might need to be, was it, oh, like, yeah, admitted to, like, the, ner- the, the nursing guy, home? Yeah, the guy came in, and he said, you know, these hip fractures at your age are very serious, and and do you have any plans for a rehab at a nursing home? I'm like, what? Uh, no. And then they ended up letting me out like a, a day and a half early. This very guy had to come <laughs> in to release me. He said, I've heard really good things about you. The uh, physical therapist said you were ready to go. <laughs> I just usually have to beat people to get them out of the bed to move. Yeah. I said, yep, I'm ready to go. Yeah, I'm going home. So, so how long how long did it take until you got back on the bike again? Uh, well, it happened like I said in July, so it probably really wasn't until uh, January. Just mainly the weather, and um, and just still, you know, it was pretty serious. It was, it pretty, was serious. A pretty. Have pretty you serious. gone back on that same trail that you fell on? Yes, yeah. and I, I went to where it was, and, and I, I, I took Dan, and I'm like, and this is it. You know, it was not even a big climb. It's just, Yeah, with everything know. technical that yeah. you have done, it, yeah. like, didn't it make sense Sandy for you to fall. and that one and, rock. And when you're mountain place. biking, too, I just want to add that it's very similar to a road bike in the terms of that you're clipped in. You're clipped oh, yeah. into your pedals. You have to be clipped in to get that push-pull. Right. And you had... You know, you can't, it's not like you can just take your feet off the pedals and put them down. Yeah. And you either got to unclip yeah. or you got to fall with your bike. Well, in that crash, my brain just didn't register as quick and I didn't clip out fast enough to, so it was a direct impact. And uh-huh. that's why, you know, and like you said, my age, my size, I'm, you know, it, it has an effect. Would you say that you have been an athlete your whole life? Yes, because I think up, starting you... out, growing up, I was a tomboy. My poor sister, I was a middle child. Um, I just picked on her all the time. <laughs> <laughs> she was, she didn't want to hold a worm. She was just, you know, she's very timid, and so I was a little, a little extroverted. And yeah, so being a tomboy, and then when I met your dad, he had horses. I I grew and up you, with a horse. Yep. Um, you trained and horses. And I trained with dad. horses. Yeah. So, and, you know... But what I, about sports, though? Because sports wasn't... I no. think that's kind of... And that wasn't too long ago. That wasn't too long ago when... And I remember you, you've you told me stories that you, because you are so athletic and 
I mean, and you and I genetically wise, like we, I put on muscle really easy. You yeah. put on muscle we have really good easy. Genes, yeah. But you were made fun of a lot. When I was small, now my mom got me into all kinds of fun things. She was really good. She was a big influence in my life. Um, and I, I was able to do gymnastic, dancing, swimming, diving. I did a lot of stuff. And I was, I either developed or was just born with a little more muscle in my calves um, than most. And the boys used to really make fun of me a lot because my calf muscles were bigger than theirs. <laughs> They're just jealous. <laughs> and I would, could run really fast. I was very a sprinter. Uh-huh. And um, so, yeah, they just made, I think they were jealous. They were jealous. Yeah, I, I remember so. racing you growing up around our house. Oh, yeah, we used to race all you the time. You would always beat me. Well, yeah. Even though I was really fast. You were fast. You know, you yeah. would still, you would always, you would always beat me. Um, and then, so, but, like, the sports that you would play, I guess you, but it wasn't really acceptable for, for women to be. Well, there just wasn't a lot out there uh, at that time. I, I did play softball in college. Now, it was a non-competitive, um, and I guess that was my first broken bone. Um sliding into third and the girl was trying to not put me out and I'm just like nope nope and so I slid right into that bag and knocked her off well it fractured it fractured my tibia bone so you know I had a full full cast in college living alone trying to take care of myself which it all worked out but that was I only got you know I didn't get to play soccer any of that kind of fun stuff you know that you and your brother got to play there just wasn't a lot out there when did you start weight training when you and your brother got on the competitive teams for soccer, for soccer, um, I, I signed us up a uh, family membership at a gym and uh, just started taking you all to the gym and just doing a little exercises there. And I actually started with a pump class. So you used to take me to that pump class. Yeah. We I used did. to just sit there yeah. though in the back for a while. I remember yeah. sitting there. Yeah. I don't know if it was every time. I don't yeah, know if I could she... even like work out or if it was like I didn't really know what to do. No, so you, you were did. like, oh, sit you down. did, no. I did. You, you yeah, you it did. It started out with like an aerobics class. Yeah. It was yeah. like a pump class with weights and then it was like cardio. Yeah. Uh huh. How so old that... was I? Uh you would have been eight? No. A little older than that. Yeah. 11? I say mood. Yeah, 11, 12. Yeah. Because your, yeah. your brother was a little older. Yeah. And, and that's some of the first... I remember that I remember that memory of, like, watching you in the pump class. Were you guys still training horses? Or did you start to fizzle out of the horse training? Uh, we were... Yeah, we weren't training anymore. We just okay. had our... We had, like, three or four horses. Just yeah. family horses. Yeah. So, yeah. And I remember seeing that. And then I also remember, because you were a big uh, Pepsi drinker. You liked the Pepsi drinks. Mm-hmm. And I remember that you, we used to always drink whole milk. And you started switching to something called skim milk. No, low fat. Low fat. Brahms and then low fat milk. Re- and then we ended up going to skim. I just remember dad seeing it. Or, or you would, no, you would pour the. I, poured, <laughs> I would pour it into the original. <laughs> You would take you know, the skim milk or the low fat and you'd pour it into the whole milk. And and I did that for almost a month. And then one day I just put the regular one in there and your and dad's like, like, what is that? And I'm like, hun, you've been drinking that for a month, <laughs> just so you know. Yeah. And so I got it. Yeah. So we started getting a little healthier. You know, back then, you know, uh, it wasn't a big thing about how we ate so much. Yeah. We ate lots of comfort food. Yep. Um, but we were active. You know, Lots of we were. hamburger helper. We did. I remember we hamburger did tuna helper. helper. I can't touch a hamburger or tuna helper anymore, Mom. Sorry. We did tuna helper <laughs> with potato chips on top. Crunched on top. Uh, you know. But we, we survived it. But we, we gradually made changes as society started seeing, you yeah. know, Changing. the danger in that, you know, eating, eating yeah. a lot of processed food. And then, and then I want to talk about... Were you working at a, you were working at the, what was your job after, so you trained horses and then you started working at, what was it, the air filter company? Oh, yes. My my mom and I started an air filter business. Um, and and, uh, and Mimi was supposed to be here and travel yeah, here to Virginia um, this week to like be here with me. But 
because of everything going on with COVID. Yeah. Um, we thought she's that it would be best. She's very healthy, and we want she her to is. stay that yeah. way. Yeah, so she stayed back um, just because of, like, the health. Like, you know, we just wanted to be cautious of that. But, yeah, so my um, – even dating back to Mimi – your mom, she was a female entrepreneur. Yes, and she she was the biggest influence in my life, and it just kind of, it just kind of trickles down. Uh, her her influence, I think, you know. How did she start the uh, company that she had? Well, uh, she got into kind of a situation that I ended up into. Also, her husband um, died suddenly, and uh, there was a downsizing in the company she worked in. And they were planning on manufacturing these filters when he retired. And so, man, there's a crazy story about that, or how we got started, but we don't have time for all that. No, I, I remember it. You guys would go dumpster diving. <laughs> we were trying to find out how... You, you would know, go dumpster diving to figure one. out how this company were, was manufacturing <laughs> these filters. <laughs> we needed to know where they got their product because they, you know, we just wanted to know how to do it. So that we did a little bit of that. Uh, so you got to... I, I, I just want you to paint the picture for me because I, I have heard, and Mimi's told me the story of how you guys would go dumpster diving to figure out how to make these we air filters. We only did this one time. But I have, like, were you like, did you have like a mask on? No. Like, we like just, bandits We went what? behind the building. Was it dark? No. <laughs> it wasn't even no, dark. It wasn't. Sorry. It was, no. Um, they just had, you know, their empty boxes and stuff that said where the products came from. And from there, we just researched it and uh, we just started from there. So, and that, that started the company Electrostatic. Yeah, yeah. Air it? Cleaners Incorporated. Air Cleaners yeah. Incorporated. And we made electrostatic air filters. Mimi for, started that. And yep. you were, she was the president and you were the vice president. Right. I was the vice president, engineer, um, cook and bottle washer. So, are there any stories of, I mean, it was, so this is a female, female ran company. Right. Back in the time where there wasn't a whole lot. You didn't Not see lot. like a female, female, female. Yeah. Like. And the business was the air cleaners and the filters was pretty predominantly, you know, into manufacturing. So I was having to deal with men a lot. Yeah. And um, I didn't have an engineering background, but um, it, it just, yeah. So, so, it, so that was, was a there, challenge. Was there anything to where like you had to basically level up whenever you would have to talk to these companies that were, you know, dominated by men and you're trying to sell them? No, I don't remember that. I just remember, you know, and when I would be in a meeting, it would just be all men and, you know, were trying you to sell them. No, no. And it was just, I liked sales and it was, you know, um, you'll get some, you know, you may have to go knock on 10 doors and maybe one will open and and we did really well. We started from the bottom and worked up. And started from the bottom as in going as through in, dumpsters. As in, yeah. <laughs> and, and we made them by hand. And we could make like six or eight filters in one day up to when we got bigger and more better equipment and stuff. Then we could push out. Yeah. So when it started, yes. was it just you and Mimi? Yes. And then you ended up, how, like, how big was the company? Oh, like, there was staff like wise? five of us. So, so it stayed pretty small? Yes. And then I know Mimi ended up selling it. She did, yeah. She sold out, moved to Texas. And, um, uh, well, and at that, t- but before that happened, then then your dad got sick. Yeah. And. Um, so I was, how long ago was that when dad got sick? It's crazy because it seems like it was just a couple years ago. I know. But it was like. It was back years. in 04, 02, 02, 02. Yeah. 02. I had just graduated well, high you school. You were, yeah. Well, no, you had, you were. I graduated because it was, it was the, it was the summer that he, it was that summer that he got diagnosed. Right. And I thought you were in I had school. already graduated. I was going to. With Tahlequah. I was going to school in Tahlequah. Right. And then you came home. Your brother was going to school. Harding he dropped University. Out, right, Harding. And he had a full ride. Yeah. Soccer, he, and yeah. he ended up dropping out. Yeah, so he came home. So my dad got diagnosed with uh, esophagus cancer. Yes. Esophagus cancer. And kind of, you know, like going back to our, like the childhood and stuff that I had, 
like we were all so healthy. There wasn't we none of us ever got sick, especially no we dad. Ne- he never Just, you know I'd have to take I, I a couple times she had a broken wrist. She I yeah, I broke my leg, leg, and my mom was like, "You're fine." I had to walk on it. You like made me walk on my broken leg for like a no, week, and then I you finally not. were like, "Okay, I guess we should go to the doctor." Because sometimes your leg's her probably memory broken. is lagging. <laughs> no, that is not true. No, I remember that. You're like, "Oh, you're fine. You just walk you it know off." What? It was your wrist. Yeah, when I was you guys were with wrestling with your brother and your dad, and you just said, "Oh, it's okay." And then a couple of days later, and I'm like, "We better go get that checked." <laughs> Um, the leg, you got kicked by a horse. Yeah. That was immediate. We went and got you looked at. And they happened kind of really close together. And I remember thinking, because <laughs> of the same doctor, he's going he's gonna to report me for child <laughs> abuse because this is happening, you know, too frequently. She's yeah. having broken bones. Yeah. Um, uh, well, thank, thank goodness that's been it. I haven't had any crazy injuries, like, since then. Um, yeah, you got it but, all the way. Uh, you know, and then, so dad got sick. He got diagnosed with cancer. That that would have been the summertime. You know, we were a really healthy family growing up. And that was like, what, when was that, June? I feel like he was diagnosed. Yes. It was around June that he was diagnosed. And he kind of put off going to have treatment for a particular reason. Um, and I remember, I remember being home though, and he would start, he would be eating, and he would start having the hiccups, and we would all just kind right. of laugh at him. We'd go out to eat, and he couldn't even finish his meal yeah. because he was hiccuping so much. And we're like, "Hun, you need to get that checked." Yeah. And then that's when he was diagnosed with that, and then. And I was away at the time. Yeah, going you to were school. away, but you came back. I came back. Uh, maybe it was like Christmas break or something, yeah. and and you were you were a big support, you know, and your brother was there. It was harder on him. Yeah, it was you, hard on him. you were by by my side, you know, the whole way. And that was and you know, Dad started chemotherapy right away, and he was he had how many surgeries did Dad have to undergo? He had one major surgery where they reattached his esophagus up here, so he he had to be careful about how he ate and how he slept. But you know, it was an, it was a fine adjustment. We could deal with it, but he just had more cancer going on than they really realized. And there was a time around he came home for Christmas. He was home for Christmas. Well, they'd actually they, they thought that they had gotten all the cancer. Right. They had told us that they had gotten it, and that was in September, or October, and then around Christmas time in December, he started not he started good. having problems again. So I so I was home during yes. this time. I yeah. had came home and and you can correct me if I if I'm wrong, but like I remember like I remember you know we were kind of celebrating cuz dad was yeah. like cancer free. Right. It was a miracle from God because right. we didn't think that he was going to be able to make it. And I remember him starting to say or express and you know like when guys get sick, they're so like all of a sudden, oh, I'm sick. Yes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but I remember he started not feeling well again and I have this memory of he was sitting in his chair in the living room yes. and he started not feeling good. And I don't know where I was. I was either in the kitchen or maybe I was in there sitting and he was like, oh, I don't feel good again. Or like, I can't get up. I need help. I need to go to the doctor. And I remember you coming in and you start, and I've never heard you raise your voice to dad. And, and this is like an emotional part for me because I remember you telling him like, like get up. Like, everything is fine. Get up. You're not sick. You don't, you know, you're not hurting again. Like, this isn't, we're not doing this again. Get up. And you're yelling at him to, like, basically man up. And unfortunately, it was, you know, we did take him back to the doctors. And yeah, we went, we went back. It was right at Christmas time. He didn't really want to go because, anyway. And it, we thought it was his gallbladder. And we were like, okay, we yeah. can deal with this. Take that thing out. We'll be fine. Well, and then he never got it back out of the hospital because that's when we found out the cancer was, you know, more sh- widespread yeah. because he wasn't healing up. So, yeah. So, and then and he passed away on his birthday. Yeah, which was, February 10th. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that. But, but like, we were together. We were with him when he took his last yeah. breath. We were reading some Bible scripture, which was so appropriate at the time. Anyway, it was all good. Yeah, I like it's funny because like I remember you yelling at Dad. I don't really remember yelling at him, but you were. Yeah, I think you were just you were. You know, it was like that fight that you have in you that you've always had in you, Mom, and that you were yelling at him to get up. 
you were yelling at him to get up that to fight to basically run towards the fight that you're not sick because I think a part of you like you didn't want to believe that he could possibly be sick oh, I know. you had yeah, already been through so much oh, because yeah. it happened so fast yeah it was quick it happened so fast and I, I remember we were sitting there with dad you know he was home with hospice and mm. we knew that he didn't have very much longer to live and you know, and we have like all these machines set up and it's loud and, and, you know, it got to the point where like he couldn't even really communicate with us anymore. And he would like, it got to the point where he, like, he was just kind of squeezing our fingers yeah. and then it got like, you know, further on. And this was all within like probably a 72 hour period. A little, it, was, it was shorter, maybe. No, longer. It, it was a little longer. Yeah. Um, but I remember we were, you were reading this passage passage through the Bible. I remember looking at just watching his neck. And watching his pulse just stop. It did. And it did. And, yeah, that's that, that was an incredible moment because we were reading a, a, a passage that just basically said, you know, you, you just believe in me and, you know, I will be there for you. I will give you strength and um, let your worries go away and then he did he took his last breath and we were just sitting there holding his hand Mm -hmm. it was really sad but it was it it was was, a relief it was really awesome I mean it was really oh I remember it because I slept with you that night and your your bedroom um where you and my dad slept it was actually right next to the kitchen where my dad had him set up in his bed yeah yeah. laid and after I remember like the you know hospice came and like they they took dad I don't remember I don't really remember that part I know it was like a long night you know they had to come get dad or whatever but I it was I don't know if I've ever shared this with you but I I remember I slept with you that night and it was quiet in the house yeah and a huge part of me almost felt relieved because two reasons I didn't have to see my dad suffer anymore right and I didn't have to see you hurt anymore because you were just trying so hard, it was a, it was a fight bigger than what you could you could take on. Yeah. During that time, and I felt a little bit guilty, you know, like being almost like I felt relieved, like I felt like just bricks were lifted off my shoulder because you know I knew that he was in a better place and the suffering was gone and right. you know now it was like the rebuilding that you had to go through. But my dad at the time, he had a business called Easy Spuds. Easy spuds, so it was a yeah. hybrid potato French fry business, and he also sold cars. Yeah, used cars on the side. Yes. Used cars on the side. Yeah, and you know my, you know he got sick so fast, and he was not. Whenever he got sick, it was almost like he was taken almost immediately out of his work. Yes, and, and that's you had when to go back in. Yeah, and that's when your brother dropped out of school. He yeah to so help Zach dropped run out of school. the business. He dropped for him. out. He left his because your dad was home all the time. Yeah, and then you and Zach. Went we into ran, dad's business. Which was not doing well. And it was in the bad part of town. <laughs> yeah. It, it was it was challenging area. And I had not really spent much time down there. Um, I just wasn't involved in that part of it. So, so you walked into we my got dad's thrown business. Into the, yeah. yeah, what happened? Well, uh, Besides we, things being a mess and you had to... Yeah, things were a mess. The The building was a mess. I was afraid we were going to get electrocuted working around the, you know, the machinery because it was just terrible. I didn't know how the health department even allowed him to keep working <laughs> in there. <laughs> and, uh, and the business was in the red. And I'm like, what... You know, I thought everything was going well here. Yeah. Um, and so Zach and I had to just start. And so I, I give my mom credit that um, when we built that business together. The air filter business? Yes. All the things that I learned from her and how to handle a business. You know, we had to get rid of that middleman who was eating up all of our profits. And so all that came into play to help and uh, I was so happy to Did you turn it around? Oh yeah we got it turned around your dad would have been really pleased we actually sold it for a pretty good profit I split it with your brother and um, What? Why didn't I get a profit in this? I'm sure I was doing something Well you were you had your own life going on Oh gosh Yeah So um, 
So yes, that was a fun time. That was very challenging, but a lot of what I learned. How long did it take whenever you walked back into dad's business and you saw that it was a mess and in the red? It took about four years. Four years to turn it around. Yeah, it did. And it was a lot of hard work. We, We did most of it. You know, we were you know, taking potatoes off the truck. We, you know, we, we did it in that business. We, we tried to keep people working to maybe two people, uh, to help us, but nobody wanted that kind of job. It, yeah, was, it was hard, it was sweaty dirty. and dirty and not yeah. real good environment. <laughs> and, it was fun. I also know, like, I think it was after dad had passed away that I started hearing of all the stories of like the people that he would help. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Your dad was amazing with um yeah and i think that's that where and, i you yeah. know you were a special eds teacher you had that place in your heart and i know that you know dad helped a lot of the he was amazing yeah misfortunate people in the area yeah he used to make um hobo stew for him all the hobo time stew. you know where? he'd just buy a whole bunch of cans of uh, beans and stuff and he throw some meat in there easy spuds? yeah yeah and and um, he would just feed yeah whoever food. whoever came around yeah and he'd, he'd, he'd let them work a little bit to earn enough money to go spend it on whatever they chose to spend it on. And um, so, yeah, he he had a very caring. Do you think that his kindness, like, do you think that he got taken advantage of? Well, he did on, on one part of it, the potato part, but um, but we took care of that as soon as Zach and I took Nipped over. Nipped that in the bud. We nipped that in the bud. We're like, we take all, kick her down walking. the road. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's interesting. Yeah, I was. do think that you know. I remember, and it's crazy because I, I never remember Dad coming home and like being like, "Oh, I felt I fed all these homeless people today." Oh, no. Or you know, he was very quiet about. Yeah, all your of dad it. was very, and he was very compassionate. Yeah, it helped he was a lot very of people. Quiet and yeah, helped a lot of people in need. Yeah, he did. And so you sold the business. Sold the business. Uh huh. And, um, and that's kind of whenever you started getting into, because you're a trainer as well now, you just yes. kind of started following that passion. Yes. And then you got into like the biking and the mountain biking. Well, yes, because when I was single, you couldn't meet anybody if you just stayed on the farm and mowed with the tractor every weekend. <laughs> you know? So you had to go be social and learn yeah, how to date again. Yeah, I'd have to, leave, have to leave the house and get out and try to meet people. And I didn't go to bars um, and I uh, met a couple girls and that rode bikes. Yeah. And I remember Ashley had left. <laughs> she had left a bike at the house, uh, a road bike. And um, I had met this guy that w- wanted to go riding uh, these trails at the park. And I got her bike out. <laughs> I had to call her and I said, Ashley, how do you shift this thing? <laughs> I mean, I did not grow up on bikes. I grew up on horses. On horses. And so did they. <laughs> um, I mean, we did not ride. They didn't own a bike. Yeah, we never had a bike no, growing up. No, we never owned a bike. And I had to call her and I said, Ashley, I can't shift this bike. How do you shift it? So uh, anyway, so I, I started doing that, trying to get out, out and meet people. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining me on this podcast with my mom and I. I know we got deep. uh, We were vulnerable. We talked about a lot of things that we actually weren't even planning on talking about. Stay tuned. If you are listening to this podcast on the drop date, we are going to roll out another one tomorrow. If you are finding this podcast in the archives, just queue up the next one and you can listen to the rest of the story. It gets better. It gets deeper. You're not going to want to miss it. Thank you guys so much for joining me on the Reborn Podcast, and I'll catch you guys soon.